It is my pleasure to welcome you to the 2021 George Bush Presidential Library and Museums Art and Essay Awards celebration. My name is Warren Finch. I'm the director of the Presidential Library and Museum. As we gather for this celebration, I would like to reflect on the education contributions of President George Bush and First Lady Barbara Bush. Their support for both education and the arts remained firm throughout their lifetime of service. We are carrying on their legacy, and we thank you for your support and participation in furthering that legacy. This year's art theme is environmental art, calling for original art depicting or using materials relating to the subject matter. Students use their imaginations and understanding of environmental issues found on the land, waters, and in space to express a creative representation. The essay contest asked students to consider environmental issues. Their essays demonstrated understanding of environmental issues also found on the land in the waters, air, or space. The essays required research, analyzing the issues, and exploring solutions for saving our environment. Now it is my pleasure to share with you the impressive work showing the talents of our area students. Many thanks to all the students who created or wrote the many thoughtful entries in our first virtual art and essay contest. Our sincerest thanks to all the teachers and families for entering the artwork and essays to support the students' enrichment beyond the classroom. This contest is funded by the George and Barbara Bush Foundation. We greatly appreciate the foundation's support for all of our programming and in particular, our education mission. Many thanks to the staff of the foundation and Max Angerholzer, the foundation CEO. The award celebration is made possible through the efforts of many people. A big thanks to all the art and essay judges. Thanks to Dr. Shirley Hammond, the director of education and the staff of the education department and volunteers who helped with this year's program which is a fitting legacy for the president and first lady. Now I'd like to introduce Dr. Hammond to give further acknowledgements. We are so glad you are here today. It is an honor to acknowledge the 2021 Art Contest judges, Dr. Melinda Austin, Jamie Bevins, and Lisa Miller. They are distinguished past awarded outstanding educators of the Bush Library. We thank you. The essay judges were education docent Barbara Orville, who formerly assisted in scientific publications, and Bush Library Director Warren Finch and myself. Once a year, the Education Department organizes the Art and Essay Contest and Awards Celebration. It is a pleasure to thank the Bush Education team, Ivy Mastrovic, Bush Education Technician, Santiago Serdan and Natalie Wilkes, who are education interns and Texas A&M University students. A special thank you to educators and parents who encourage student participation. We appreciate the students for all of your hard work. Our award celebration will follow with four outstanding educator awards given. After that, the Art and Essay Student Awards will be announced. The final highlight is the spotlight on five art educators of the Brazos Valley Art Education Association. They created original artwork using the contest theme. And we want to thank them. The artists are Dr. Melinda Austin, Jamie Bevins, Lisa Miller, Lisa Urban, and Nathan Vogt. Now, Dr. Robert Hoseweiss, Bush Library Deputy Director, will present the Outstanding Educator Awards of 2020 to 2021. Thank you. Hello. I'm Robert Holzweiss, and I'm the Deputy Director of the George H.W. Bush Presidential Library and Museum. Thank you for joining us today. It is a great pleasure and honor 
to salute four dedicated individuals who make a difference in the lives of our students and our community through their remarkable educational service. The awards we're about to present are in appreciation for consistently supporting the enrichment, creativity of students through their dedication, inspiration, and encouragement both in and outside the classroom. Using alphabetical order, we will honor these four remarkable individuals dedicated to enhancing our community and educating our students. Receiving the George H.W. Bush Library and Museum's Outstanding Educator Award is Principal Donna M. Barrington of Greens Prairie Elementary School in College Station ISD. For 35 years, she has taught, inspired, led, administrated, and improved teaching and learning environments for students. Principal Barrington's areas of expertise are impressive and include serving as instructional leader, curriculum developer, conference presenter, program evaluator, community partnerships coordinator, grant writer, consultant, A&M Technology Education Collaborative member, and a member of the Texas A&M Center for Distance Learning Research and the Texas Elementary Science In-Service Project. She also does math in-service and was a creator of professional videos to share her knowledge and expertise. Principal Barrington holds a Master of Science from Texas A&M University Adult and Education in the Department of Education Human Resource Development. Her Bachelor of Science degree is from the College of Charleston. She was also selected for an internship at NASA's Teachers Professional Development Center in Houston. Principal Barrington's educational philosophy focuses on real world application of classroom skills. She believes, and this is a quote, it is our mission as educators to develop students that will change the world as tomorrow's innovators and problem solvers, creating an enriching learning environment where our students are not only successful in academics, but have the ability to participate in quality fine arts programs, develop socially and emotionally, and are called like no other to service in their community." Unquote. Due to appreciation shown of her success across the field of education, she has received many impressive awards. A few of them I will share with you now. Highlights include State of Texas Presidential Award for Outstanding Teaching in Elementary Math and Science, the Harvard Leadership Institute scholarship recipient for Raise Your Hand Texas, and HEB 2021 Raise Your Hand Texas Regional Director. She's also been awarded as a professional educator from the College of Education at Texas A&M University and received the Texas Elementary Principals and Supervisors Association Assistant Principal of the Year for District 6. Finally, she was honored to be selected as a Brazos County Aggie Mom President. And as an A&M graduate, I can say that that is probably one of the highest honors that she cherishes the most. We salute you, Principal Barrington, for your active engagement, dedication, and educational enrichment in providing innovative experiences in the lives of the students of Bryan and College Station. Thank you very much. Receiving the George H.W. Bush Presidential Library and Museum's Outstanding Educator Award is Ms. Marcy Cassell. Ms. Cassell is a lower school and sixth grade art educator at Allen Academy. She holds a Bachelor of Science in Architectural Studies from the University of Texas, a, certi a certification in special education, and has been teaching for over a dozen years. Ms. Cassell shares her education philosophy by explaining, quote, it is important to learn the language of art and how to discuss the artwork we observe and create. It is such a joy to see students find freedom and take pride in creating art, as well as struggle with design decisions to find creative solutions. She continues by saying, the one thing all my students know when they enter my class is that there's no mistakes in art, only opportunities. In art, there are many creative ways to solve a problem, unquote. Mrs. Cassell's career highlights include outstanding dedication to the arts, of course. She sponsors a collaborative art project every year with Allen Academy Humanities teacher Casey Zomwait to create fourth grade museum of American artists. Students research a chosen American artist style to be inspired in their art and approach original artwork using a thematic approach. Using a museum format, the art is displayed and presented to the greater school community. Her students' artwork is shown in Youth Art Month traveling exhibits sponsored by the Texas Art Education Association. And as an active member, she has attended the TAEA statewide conferences. Mrs. Cassell is an active member of, and former treasurer of the Brazos Valley Art Educators Association. 
For the Brazos Valley Arts Council, she has participated in Big Art Day, weaving installation and curated a display of Allen Academy's students' artwork. With her husband, Kyle Cassell, she received the inaugural John Allen and Rivers Allen Distinguished Partners in Excellence Award in 2019 for involvement instrumental to the growth and success of Allen Academy. Mrs. Cassell has created several semi-permanent art installations at Allen Academy to beautify the campus through all school collaborations and presented biannual student displays and celebrations of the arts for both the school and the local community. Annually, Mrs. Cassell's Allen Academy students artwork reflects purposeful creative originality in the George H.W. Bush Presidential Library and Museum Art Contest. And I must add that the students at Allen Academy often contribute very creative and very inspiring works. In addition to her teaching commitment, she is engaged in public service, including being a board member at the prenatal clinic, a religious education teacher at St. Thomas Aquinas Church, Allen Academy Parent Association Vice President, and an advisor to Chi Omega Sorority at Texas A&M University. Mrs. Cassell reflects on her dedication to excellence by saying, quote, children need to know how to read, interpret, and act on what they see in the world around them. As an educator, I believe in teaching students how to look and think critically about what they see, unquote. Thank you, Mrs. Cassell, for that very inspiring words. And as an educator myself, I can say with some certainty that your work at this level will pay huge dividends later. She continues by saying, quote, I enjoy taking the children on a journey through time from prehistoric to modern times as they discover the elements and principles of design. I believe in exploring art from various cultures and teaching the skills to, that allow students to produce great works of art, unquote. We salute you for your creative and artistic leadership and thank you for your service to our students and our community. Receiving the George H.W. Bush Presidential Library and Museum's Outstanding Educator Award is Clinton M. Ron. Mr. Ron's personal educational background includes two master's degrees, from Sam Houston State University, he earned his Educational Administration Master's Degree. He holds the second Master's Degree in Curriculum and Instruction from Texas A&M University. He has taught at Bryan ISD for 11 years and teaches pre-AP sixth grade social studies at Jane Long Intermediate School. He is the Inquire Academy of Global Leadership's team lead in Bryan ISD for fifth and sixth grades. Mr. Ron greatly enjoys instructing, encouraging, and developing gifted and talented students to thrive in appreciating the values of social studies. This unfolds through various activities and lessons in the Inquire program. Also, he is the only World Peace Games Administrator in the Bryan College Station area. In addition, his educational contributions include working as a team lead to co-author the social studies curriculum. Mr. Ron's educational philosophy demonstrates his purpose and commitment to the education of youth. He says, quote, students desire and need to learn. My job is to facilitate and guide the processes by which they learn while leaving the act of discovery to the students, unquote. To explain his philosophy further, he adds, quote, education is more than just filling minds with facts and formulas. It is allowing children to discover interests and helping them develop skills that will drive them to their future, unquote. Those of us who have watched Mr. Ron in action teaching and leading his students know that he has significantly impacted many lives. In addition to making numerous educational contributions, he believes in broadening their horizons so that they may live fulfilling lives and understand while social studies remains a vital and dynamic aspect of their life and a critically important component of their education. Under his leadership, Mr. Ron's students have discovered enrichment beyond the classroom. His students have participated in major reading discovery programs and historical storytelling programs at the George H.W. Bush Presidential Library and Museum, and have also attended several other local educational enrichment opportunities. We thank Principal Cody Satterfield at Jane Long Elementary School, who reached out to say, Clint Ron is such an amazing educator, and he is very deserving of this award. I am so honored to work with him every day. For Mr. Ron's dedication to furthering his students' educational accomplishments and enjoyment of understanding social studies while providing opportunities of enrichment through his leadership, we salute him. Thank you, Mr. Ron, and thank you for all the support that Brian ISD gives you in your ongoing teaching activities.
Receiving the George H.W. Bush Presidential Library and Museum's Outstanding Educator Award is Mike Wright. It was his family whom he listed first on his list of accomplishments. Wife Bethany of 25 years and college age twins Macy, A&M class of 23, and Mason Stephen F. Austin University, class of 23. His mother Peggy is a former Bush Library volunteer and his father Bob is a frequent visitor and inductee into the Hall of Fame as a lifetime newspaper sports writer. In sharing his educational and service philosophy, Mike explained, quote, when blessed with the platform, talent, or opportunity, giving back is a way of showing gratitude for all of life's blessings. Sir Isaac Newton's quote, if I have seen further, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants, pays respects to those who paved the way in our path of life. We do that by sharing with each other and impacting the lives of others in a positive way. It is a calling to be a voice for those who have no voice. Doing things expecting nothing in return because the blessing you will never see is the one you leave in your wake, unquote. As a result of Mike's positive giving to others, he has received multiple awards and multiple opportunities to give to the community. A few of those examples over the past 30 years in Bryan College Station include the George H.W. Bush Library and Museum Education Department's Barbara Bush Reading Discovery and Literacy Programs, where he has emceed since 2009. He also co emceed with Jim Nance at CBS at President George H.W. Bush's birthday parachute jump. He emceed the 9-11 commemorative ceremonies. He has, on multiple occasions, narrated at Brazos Valley Symphony Children's Concert and a multi-year MSC Opus Gala narration. He has also participated in African Museum Annual Award Ceremony, and he is the annual MC of the Bryan College Station Chamber of Commerce Banquet. Mike Wright has received the prestigious Texas Broadcaster of the Year Award. He is proud to have served KBTX-TV in Bryan College Station for 15 years as the fourth vice president and general manager of the station. And during his leadership, KWTX-TV received the National Association of Broadcasters Education Foundation Service to America Award for outstanding contributions in education endeavors and support of the communities the station serves. He has received special recognition from the Military Order of the Purple Heart. While serving as general manager of KWTX TV, KBTX in Bryan College Station, he was honored as the first Purple Heart television station in the nation for service to our veterans. Other community service includes organizing a blood drive and serving at the Brazos Valley Food Bank. Also, he has given to the benefit of those less fortunate and contributions made by the staff of both his television stations to the community. Mr. Wright notes, quote, we have a supportive community and we show our thanks by helping others as good community partners, unquote. With wife Bethany, he was honored with the 2020 Brenner Award for support of China Spring High School Band Program. Mike Wright is an inductee in the Blinn College Alumni Hall of Honor and former president of Blinn's Brazos County Advisory Board. Finally, Mr. Wright contributes to our community by being a play-by-play -play broadcast announcer of A&M Consolidated Tiger football for 27 seasons. And he was one of only five all-time voices of Kyle Field at Texas A&M University. For many years of being our voice and of helping others in our community through your service, we salute you, Mike Wright. Thank you for your service and thank you for your support of the George H.W. Bush Presidential Library and Museum. Let's continue by honoring the outstanding talents of our students. Congratulations to all of our winners. Now, Ivy Mestrovic and Santiago Serdan of the Bush Education Team will share the 2021 Art and Essay Contest winners. Congratulations to you all. Thank you for your participation, and we hope you'll join us again next year when we unveil our new Art and Essay Contest. So we are going to start today with the Art Contest Awards for grades kindergarten through second. For honorable mention, our winners are Lexi Ballard, Addison Ostegween, Owen Hutto, and Caitlin Hartman. Our third place winners are Magdalene Schroll, Magnolia May Her, Ellie Loveless, Kai Loveless, Adeline Smith, Caroline Hu, Maura Stibb, Aaron Stegall, Jackson Domian, and William Ball.
Our second place winners are Claire Lindo, Hudson Thomas, Owen Reese, Jamie Dyson, Cruz Cadero, Kennedy Ball, Kenna Prescott, Aiden Lawless, Talon Loveless, Brooklyn Hall, Zoe Dodds, Jack Janus, John Wilson Mitchum, Charlie Smith, and Annie Sweet. Our first place winners are Reese Kilzer, Lucy Wu, Kana Kelly Sumikura, Aga Demkowitz, and Rosevier Hutto. And now, for our essay contest awards for 4th through 5th grade, our honorable mention winners are Noelle Benham, Ramona Dewerkin, Drew Dyson, Charles Simon O'Neill, Milo Turner, Lena White, and Cole Zumwalt. Our third place winners are Gavin Carvajal, Shimon Kokalingam, Kaylin Gaither, Libby Gibson, Carly Matthews, Neam Patel, and William Smith. Our second place winners are William Carroll, Sadie Loop, Andrew Liu, Brittany Opsaw, Colin Reese, Delaney Satsky, and Isaiah Vines. And our first place winners are Maddie Dawson, Autumn Light, Madan Mahajan, Sanjay Philly, Josephine Posvar, Daniel Puller, and Jack Zhao. Our next category is the Art Awards for grades 3 through 5. Our honorable mention 2D winners are Michelle Kolosinski, Sabrina Jimenez, Sadie Lester, Zoe Perot, Jackson Roden, McKenna Harris Wallace, Landry Ford, Atticus Wilson, Adeline Chadwick, Fiona Hubbard, Noelle Benham, Isaiah Vines, Clara Eubanks, Christian Arredondo, Lucy Lavender, and Jerusha Arosh. Our honorable mention 3D winners are Sanjay Pillay, Delani Satsky, William Smith, and Drew Dyson. Our third place 2D winners are Sophia Ribardo, Brady Fuller, Yunsi Milan, Pike Song, Kaylee Williams, Kaylin Wynn, Caroline Durant, Cooper Poge, Colton Anderson, Riley Davidson, Noah Pasek, J.P. Lucas, Mikhail Hussein, Alexander Wang, Harris Hendler, Kanal Field, Katie Montgomery, and Lena White. Our third place 3D winners are Neam Patel, Maddie Dawson, Jason Abbott, and Callan Gaither. Our second place 2D winners are Everly Bridges, Sarah Charles Lott, Clayton Brewer, Sophia Palomo Wondrak, Kathy Kolosinski, Brody Thompson, Jessica Elizabeth Fines, Addison Duhon, Aaron Boley, Joanna Fox, Braley Harbin, Ellie Colvin, Rice Sang, Alyssa Cruz, and Caroline Johnson. Our second place 3D winners are Malak Farage and Alex Quimby. Our first place 2D winners are Benton Morris, Jack Show, Anthony Hernandez, Hudson Hutto, Jack Carlson, Alaya Hernandez, Brooklyn Barsh, Adeline Stevens, Amari Wilson, and Sarah K. Chandler. Our first place 3D winners are Colin Reese and Will Carroll. Next, 
Our essay contest awards for 6th through 8th grade. Our honorable mention winners are Gabrielle Cerezo, Spencer Ellis, Stefan Bosfar, Carson Ramsey, and Kate Smith. Our third place winners are Gabriela Ching, Ryan Griffin, Luna Bajina, Koi Majik, Angelica Papini, and Kyla Stewart. Our second place winners are Cheyenne Blackman, Sierra Collins, Kobe Daniels, Fatima Murillo, Hadley Noposath, Truth Spear, and Edward Zhao. And our first place winners are Andrew Caitlin, Cooper Ellis, Katie Heslip, Christopher Jones, Samprokshana Kartikane, Joshua Kelby, Allison Kruger, Madeline Schneider, Elijah Vines, and Kaylee Vogler. Our Art Contest Awards for grades 6 through 8. Our honorable mention 2D winners are Jaden Maldonado, Bo Connor, Julissa Aguiano, Alyssa Tenorio, Robin Klotz, and London Chapman. Our third place 2D winners are Aubrey Westmoreland, Ashlyn Feliciano, Neely Wilson, Taylor Caris, Vidya Sridhar, Dallas Moore, Jamarian Lewis, and Sarah Liu. Our third place 3D winners are Spencer McAllister, Ricardo Negrete, Ryder Richards, and Cooper Johnson. Our second place 2D winners are Samuel Avolio, Macy Nowick, Noel Pope, Alaya Garza, Angel Albanderis, Ellie Smart, Elena Richards, and Lenora Wright. Our second place 3D winners are Kylie Ritter, Aiden Pryor, and Darren McCannon. Our first place 2D winners are Jersey Bats, Shireen Gohill, Trenton Brock, Elliot Hutto, Ellie Karasek, and Garrett Stallings. Our first place 3D winners are Joshua Limmer, Nora Grunkmere, Micah Perot, and Dasha Kostava. Next. Our essay contest awards for 9th through 12th grade. Our honorable mention winners are Sarah Burrow, Samuel Chu, Kelly He, Destiny Lanes, and Alex Roeder. Our third place winners are Brooke Bennett, Harper Cunningham, Garrett Dollins, Adim Gabby, Sarah Hawthorne, Ellie Hugh, Emma Paul, Allison Seegers, Ikatrina Soklova, Zachary Wang, and Pariha Zai. Our second place winners are Emma Burrow, Evelyn Breeden, Laurel Brumbello, Ava Derbs, Leanne G, Rebecca Kumar, Kyler Larson, Mary Matsberg, Meredith McFrayan, Valeria Macri, and Michael Pang. And our first place winners are Mikel Alberti, Gabrielle Gillen, Lauren Hightower, Andrew Larson, Iris Resendiz Lopez, Zai Torres Salinas, Kathy Mia, Max Pejois, Michael Zhang, and Sheen Zhang. Lastly, the Art Awards for grades 9 through 12. Our honorable mention 2D winners are. Dylan Ortega, Yaki Gonzalez, Haley Gonzalez, Emily Locke, Nastasha Gauge, Reagan Cullen, Elise Casallea, Jalen Sanchez, and Brooke Restivo. Our third place 2D winners are Riley Morgan, Blake Blanchard, Samantha Stover, Miranda McGee, John Karasek, 
Ashley Owens, and Bailey Harris. Our third place 3D winner is Olivia Dawson. Our second place 2D winners are Anika von Steinberg, Noah Merrill, Janice Kim, Cameron Glowacki, Bethany Fatrell, Voya Shi, Leah Putz, Brody Kaiser, and Grace Barrick. Our second place 3D winner is Emma Burton. Our first place 2D winners are Jennifer Langhoff, Mary McCarthy, Demi Hu, Diego Ross, Marla Torres, Sakaya Viguia, Rihanna Mishima, and Amy Lee. Our first place 3D winners are Thomas Erhart, Brianna Steyer, Ben Weiss, Kristen Ballard, Emily Adams, and Lena Lindell. Now we will present the spotlight on five art educators by beginning with Dr. Melinda Austin, followed by Jamie Bevins, Lisa Miller, Lisa Urban, and Nathan Vogt. Hi, this is Mindy Austin. I'm a retired art teacher in College Station, Texas. I um, participated in the spotlight on art educators again this year. I really like the theme that was presented to the students and teachers about ecology, our environment, and it's so important, probably the most important thing that we can teach the children and young people in our schools. I was able to uh, recycle some material and use them to create my composition. First, I started with a recycled canvas. So uh, I knew that that experimental canvas at one point would be gessoed over. I gessoed it to start with a clean background and I used uh, maps and atlases that I had and tore out pages and just put a abstract design on top of the canvas. Then I was able to use watercolor, water-based acrylic paint and do watercolor wash over the collage that I had made. And then on top of that, I was able to use my long uh, collected broken reader glasses, my $1 reader glasses, which uh, broke on a regular basis, but I needed them so much, especially when I was teaching school, and pop out the lenses and decide what to do with them. So I was able to plan them in a peace sign pattern. I laid them out, got the ones, the shapes that I wanted, and decided on a prism color, color theme, uh, like my background, and laid those out and applied them to the collage. After that, it seemed like it still needed something. I was really meditative about this theme, and I found a poem, or actually a prayer, from the Australian Anglican Church about climate change. And it just, you know, really centered me in thinking about what we should be doing to protect our environment and take care of our Mother Earth. So I was able to write that, add the word on top of the collage in a repeated pattern. And it, it is meditative for me. And I do like it because it's something I can look at and keep my thoughts on what we should be doing. As a teacher, I was so happy whenever we could recycle items, and there is so much art that you can make with recycled items. So I knew my eyeglasses at some point, and I, I still have a whole bunch, could be used for something. I love maps and, of course, any kind of collage, and anybody can do this kind of art. So I appreciate the opportunity, and thank you so much, Shirley Hammond and everyone else who keeps us going there at the George Bush Library. Y'all have a good day. Bye. First, I would love to thank the George Bush Presidential Library for, and their education department for making it possible for our educators in our area to showcase their work and their ideas on creativity and how to stroke the imaginations of our students. So thank you for allowing this, us this opportunity. I'd like to talk a little bit about my
my painting and my process and the creativity behind what I did for the painting for our children. So, you know, I started this painting as a landscape and I kept looking at it going, wow, I, this doesn't really make the statement that I want it to make. And I think that's important. Art is about communication. It's about communicating an idea, uh, getting a thought across. Um, it's just about giving voice to something that you're passionate about as well. So, I went back through some of my photographs, which is, I guess that's kind of my process. I go through and I look at my photographs and I see what's there that I can kind of put together. And how does that give me an idea? I'm not a big sketchbook journaler. Uh, I know some people attack creativity that way and they, and they draw and they draw and they draw and they draw, um, but that's not the way my brain thinks. <laughs> uh, and then maybe in a way it's a, a laziness on my part, but I just kind of grab ideas and just start putting them together and see what happens. So the first image that I found was one I took at the Renaissance Festival, and I actually took the photograph for one of my students because she wanted to paint this little girl that had this wonderful um, Japanese parasol behind her and this wonderful little costume. And I don't know if she ever painted that or not, but I thought, well, it doesn't have to be a focal point piece. I can just add it in there because it's kind of about this wonderful child dancing in the forest and, and enjoying what's around her, right? So I put that in. And then I thought, well, that's, that's not strong enough. I just need more. So I have decided that my granddaughter is now my muse. And she loves to pose and she uh, plays and she has, she has such a naive look on life and an imagination that just, you know, expands volumes. And in looking at some of the things that uh, we had done and some of the things that, uh, that she had done, I came across some lovely images that really said what I wanted it to say. And that's that, you know, there is nothing, nothing more powerful than to look at the world through a child's eyes and to think about the wonder that's there. And with this exhibit in, in ecology, you know, we have to save our world for our children. So they will have those wonderful moments of clarity when they, they look at the world and they, and they see the wonder and the imagination and the beauty that's there. And if we don't take care of our world, it will disappear and we won't have that for our children. So thank you for watching. Thank you for watching the process and, and thank you for taking care of our earth. Welcome to Venture Farms. My name is Lisa Miller. It's a privilege to participate in the Bush Library's Spotlight on Our Educator Art Show. Uh, I've been doing this for a while and I was thrilled, absolutely thrilled with the theme this year, uh, which is about the environment because it's something that probably has had a huge impact on my life. Uh, I was 16-ish when I first read uh, Silent Spring by Rachel Carson, uh, which was a pivotal book for me. I uh, also read In the Shadow of Man by Jane Goodall. Um, if I'd been better at math, I would have probably gone into uh, science and biology and wildlife biology, something like that. But art has always been a way for me to connect with nature and spotlight places that are special. For 
me, environment is being outside and being someplace where you're connected to nature uh, with uh, plants and animals. And so it's very important for me to uh, acknowledge the places that have been important in my life. Fincher Farms, I've been coming out here since I was knee-high to a grasshopper with my great-grandfather, uh, Finch, uh, Robert Finch Gary. Uh, this is called Fincher Farm in his honor. And a uh, long-term plan is for this to be uh, some type of a nature preserve, uh, which I'm currently <laughs> working on. Can you help me? And so the painting that I put into the exhibit this year is a, a colorful century, and it is a century plant that I photographed and sketched uh, on one of my trips to uh, Big Bend National Park. Uh, my uh, couple of art buddies and I used to go to Big Bend on a regular basis and do paintings. And so this came about because of that, uh, one of those trips. Other places that are real special for me, Enchanted Rock in uh, Central Texas is a, another amazing place. But I even remember as a kid, my elementary school, Highland Park, I remember in the springtime when there was a quarry at this park at my elementary school. And in the springtime, the frogs would hatch out and there would be waves of little tiny frogs just everywhere and I remember as a kid being just fascinated by that and I'm actually in the process of working with a wildlife biologist with Parks and Wildlife to come out here this summer and visit my farm to see about uh, doing recordings to see if we can find out if there's any uh, endangered Houston toads that live here at my farm. So this is something that's a big part of my life, a big part of my art. And so I really hope y'all uh, enjoy the images of my painting. Images of, of nature and the animals is a huge subject matter for me as an artist. I don't see that changing anytime soon. That's just part of what I like to connect with when I do art. <laughs> you know? And so I really appreciate this opportunity again. Uh, thank you to Shirley, uh, Dr. Shirley Hammond at the Bush Library for allowing this uh, exhibit to continue on a regular basis, and I'm uh, very privileged and thrilled to be a part of this. Uh, the painting is a water-based oil, which I switched from regular oils to water-based oils because they're less uh, toxic and less uh, harmful to the environment. And so that's what this painting is done in. And so uh, I hope y'all enjoy the image, and I hope that everyone will look at the paintings in this exhibit and be inspired to make a difference and do what you can to try to help out Mother Nature. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Take care. So this project came about in several ways. First of all, I'm a fiber artist. I mean, I love to knit all the time. I paint pictures of knitted things. I love to crochet. I love to do anything with fiber. So I had a feeling I was going to incorporate that into this piece in some way. Originally, I thought I was going to make a painting again. But then I thought, what better way to celebrate the earth than by making the earth? And so I decided to cut apart plastic bags and crochet a big earth. Um, so what I did is I started hunting for blue plastic bags. They unfortunately did not make them very much except for in the grocery store. So I actually had to go buy a box of Glad recyclable blue plastic bags that I cut apart. Um, the green ones I had at home. I had collected several from when I used to do art fair booths. So I had green and I had blue. Um, I cut the blue ones and the green ones apart into yarn. It's a really cool technique that I've got a quick video for y'all. Um, you can watch that and then I'm going to talk about my art some more. So after I had made the yarn out of about seven or eight of these bags, I started crocheting it. And I found a pattern to do a center out bath mat that, you know, it gets bigger as you go. And I used a really big crochet hook. And as I started to go, it kind of started to bend and kind of almost become like a bowl and less flat. And so I knew, knew I needed to fix that problem. Um, after digging through my very messy studio, I actually found an old metal wreath form that I put behind it and that was able to stretch it out 
and keep it flat, which then allowed me to put the planets on the planets, the continents on top. The continents were created with the green bags and I freeformed them by crocheting the random shapes the best I could to match some of the planets on a couple of images of the earth that I looked up. Uh, I crocheted all of those separate and then I sewed them on. And then I added a few little extra woven elements with the green on top to add some extra islands and stuff. And that's about it. Um, this piece for me, it was a challenge, definitely especially with crocheting with the big yarn and the big hook. But I think the challenge was worth it because I really think it speaks about how plastic is hurting our earth, hurting our environment, and how we really need to try and work to get it better. And just hopefully by seeing this piece and by seeing the use of the material, people can kind of, you know, put two and two together and realize that we need, we need to work together and make a greener earth. You know, one plastic bag at a time. The inspiration for my piece came from just walking around and seeing people just take off the mask and just drop them on the ground, not even bothering to put them in the trash. It really just saddened me that during this pandemic, people view the disposable mask as just that disposable and all, and just leaving them on the ground instead of putting them in the trash can. Even at school, I mean, I, there's students that just leave them on the ground, and it really just saddens me that they can't bother just to put those masks in a trash can. Is that, or even just use reusable ones, which are simple and cheap to come by now. While getting started on this project, I played around with the idea of using sand with glue mixture in it to give that natural feel to it. I also put sand on top of the mask as well. Unfortunately, while playing with it, it didn't really stick or dry as well as I wanted it to. So what I ended up doing was using a canvas board and smearing a coarse coarse pumice gel on it with a putty knife. Make sure I get those peaks to make it look more natural. And the coarseness of it just helps it look more natural to me. Uh, while I was doing that, I collected the mask from around my school that I found laying on the ground. I stuck them in a Walmart bag, washed my hands, uh, sprayed them with disinfectant spray, and let them kind of dry out a little bit from the disinfectant spray. The background was, I used a coat of brown paint on the back to help set the tone of it. And then I just add uh, different values of brown, different tones, uh, in it with a black on top. I used a, a big old house painting paintbrush to kind of smear it to give that look a more natural feel. For the mask, I was originally gonna try and mod podge them on there. Unfortunately, it didn't really work. So I, what I ended up doing was just using rubber cement to glue them onto the piece. I really do like the way it turned out. I really do hope it highlights that while we're in a pandemic, we need to be mindful of our environment as well. We can easily use reusable mask and just simply put our disposable mask into the trash can. Thank you.